my name is the conductor, the bipolar conductor, I guess. Uh, but I just go by the conductor handle myself. Didn't mean to have the music on there at the beginning because it is copyrighted material. What you're watching right now is a slideshow. I gotta shut this slide off. Uh, what you're watching right now is a slideshow of just a bunch of random photos of mine that I took <clears throat> because uh, I just don't, it's not really to show off the photos, it's just to give you something to look at uh, while I talk. It's kind of like an old style radio show kind of format. I am listening to music, but it is copyrighted as you know and anything distributed over the web has copyrights associated with it you can't use it so unfortunately until I obtain and that's probably a long shot any copyrighted uh, music that I can play during my broadcasts then I just won't have it uh, but I'm working on it In the meantime, you know, enjoy the photos. I go by the handle conductor, C O N D U K T O R. Because it's not really supposed to be about uh, like an orchestra type of conductor, it's more like a wire conducts electricity, like that kind of conductor. And yeah, I'm bipolar. It's nothing to be afraid of or anything like that. But a lot of people still have a lot of misconceptions and misperceptions about what bipolar is. And I don't, I don't blame them because nobody's really telling the right story out there. Uh, it basically means people who are bipolar they experience emotion at a higher volume level on the knob is how I would put it. If, if the average person experiences emotion at a level four, then a bipolar person probably feels the same emotions at a volume level of about seven, if, if the metaphor works for you. Um, I guess that means that they can feel happiness a little bit stronger and they can feel sadness a little bit stronger. Uh, we, I should say. But it certainly isn't anything to be afraid of. I mean, you know, Isaac Newton was bipolar. Um, Cantor, uh, Hemingway, Van Gogh, you know. Lots of people have had strong emotional runs in life and that's basically what bipolar people are. They run hot and cold. <laughs> we, we, it's not a choice though, is what people gotta understand is it's not like we choose to be this way, it's how our motor runs. So um, I just wanted to take a minute to kind of introduce myself and start to put some of my thoughts out there. And I'm going to go in and out of talking from time to time to give you a chance to just absorb uh, the imagery a little bit. Hopefully to also make it a more relaxing experience. I'm just trying to make it a, you know, something that for once isn't a high energy activity in people's lives <laughs> that has to fit into 10 second time frames because that gets a little old. Let's see how connected we all really are. They tell us the world is flat. Again. After all those years of telling us it wasn't. Of course it's a metaphor, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't think we're all as connected as we think we are. There's so many connections in the conduit. Uh, 
we may be right next to all the other connections, but that doesn't mean we're connected to them. You know, those two things are different. Two wires in the same conduit are not connected, but they're probably less than a millimeter apart from one another, and yet cannot conduct electricity through them. That's the metaphor I'm using. Yeah, connected. Okay, what does connected really mean? It just means you have the ability to reach someone. It doesn't mean that you are connected to them. Uh, those, two, those two concepts are quite a bit different. If, I'll say this at the beginning because I don't want to forget to say it, uh, if anybody's interested in this format or likes it, I have no idea if this is what people like or don't like out there. So you can email me if you do and I'll do something similar or if you have suggestions about how to do this differently or how to get copyrights for music. I'm really, really trying to figure that part out. Um, I gotta get like Brandon Flowers, The Killers, Bass Nectar. There's just a shitload of bands that I would, uh, Radiohead, you know, I think they're pretty indie. I'm looking for a lot of bands that are willing to kind of loan out their copyright on their songs so that I can paint the music, which is something that I've been trying to do all winter. Since being off work, I've been trying to, because uh, i got a full-time job, but I mean, in the, I get laid off for the winters, and when I'm off, I get the opportunity to uh, push into art a little bit more. And all I've been trying to do this winter is uh, is get this kind of thing out. So what's holding me back is the copyrights. And so if any of those bands or if, if any other bands are interested in loaning their copyrights out so that I can paint their music uh, on video for distribution through the web, um, I you know, whatever. If you want a percentage of the revenues or whatever, we can work something out. It's not about the money for me. It honestly isn't. I'm an artist, if I didn't mention that, in, uh, in the Midwest. And I, I basically have had a hard time getting my message out there, being that we're all so connected. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't seem anybody's uh, listening, I guess. Yeah, but I feel like, feel like I'm playing that Pink Floyd song. Is there anybody out there? Now, they'll probably come after me for saying that. I mean, it is brutal out there with the copyrights, guys. Seriously, here's, here's my message to artists about the copyrights. And this is, I hope people listen to this. It is not going to change out there creatively if we, as the artists, don't take control of our own work. What do I mean by that? Well... Nobody can build upon somebody else's work at all. There's no art as conversation occurring. You know, some people know what I'm talking about, where one person has an original work and then somebody else uses some part of that in what they create, but it's something totally new, and then pays uh, both respect and money to the original artist for the revenues, a percentage, you know, of what they make on the resultant work. So why couldn't that work? Why couldn't that system work? Why do we have to lock down all this material? Um, you know, I'm just looking to basically take what they created musically and then translate it into paint. And that's something I do in my studio already. I do it all the time. And a lot of people have been telling me to bring it on the web. And I'm like, well, I can't. Everything's copyrighted, and the moment I post something to the web, they're going to shut it down. So, you know, I'm trying to show you what it is that I do. Uh, I paint to music. There's a lot of movement. A lot of it's weird. It's like it's like it's like dancing and painting and tai chi, all kinds of shit going on at once. And uh, I think it's super cool. People who have seen me do it think it's super cool. But I can't put it on the web if uh, I can't use music. 
you know. So I've been trying to work on this copyright thing. And, and if, you, if, you, if you believe in that sort of thing, then send this to your friends. You know, get a lot of clicks on this video, and then hopefully it'll get enough attention to where I can get a few copyrights freed up, actually record what I'm trying to show everybody, and then see if people like it. Like, I can't even get it out there. So anyway, that's my uh, thoughts about copyrights. Because, you know, artists, if you're waiting for the lawyers or the corporations to... <laughs> make something fair or to make something creative y you know as well as I do they never will it's your responsibility to ensure that creativity continues from your art and if you're letting the lawyers tell you that you gotta lock it down uh, you've lost your soul so it's time to uh, bring creativity back into the arts man and, and that kind of collaborative spirit where we can build on each other's stuff that's, that's about that's about all the ranting I'm going to do on on uh, that subject. Right now, in my headphones, playing, I wish I could play for you, is Rage Against the Machine. One of the bands that I'm hoping, the Renegade album, one of the bands that I'm hoping will free up something. I mean, I could really paint some cool stuff with this. And I thought about recording a video, you know, of me doing my thing, but just leaving it on uh, mute. And it looks stupid, you guys. I can't sit, I can't put that out and then be like, yeah, but let me play music with it. It'll be really cool, I promise. No, it's like friggin' Napoleon Dynamite. I can't do that. I gotta do this right, damn it. I need to get the bands to free some stuff up. If you like the photos, you know, great. It's just uh, it's just like eye candy for you while you listen. See, I'm one of these guys that goes all the way back to, like, radio shows. I'm one of these guys that remembers what it was like to listen to a DJ for three hours at 2 o'clock in the morning, you know. <laughs> and he was half lit. I mean, the guy was in the bag. This guy I used to listen to in high school, the guy was in the bag every time he did the show and it was hilarious if the music wasn't great just listening to him was worth it but you, know, you don't really get that anymore in the in the little quick small package bite-sized world that we live in now at some point those photos will repeat I am uh, smoking, if you heard that, I'm smoking, um, let's see, my current blend is, I play around with these things, you know, I've got old number 78, let's see, Sir Walter Raleigh, Bull Durham, Tube Cut, and no, I don't work for any of those guys, and no, I'm not getting any money from any of those guys. Maybe they'll send me some free, you know, smokes. I don't know. But, no, I've got no deals with anybody. I'm not paid by anybody. I guess I should have said that at the beginning of the video, but I'm not smart. <laughs> um, I don't have any deals with anybody. I'm just trying to, like, I'm just a voice in the night, man. I'm just trying to put my word out there and see if I can get a few people listening. I actually am one of these guys who really like that concept, Pump Up the Volume, that cheesy ass movie with Christian Slater, but it was the concept that the guy, you know, could say whatever he wanted because they couldn't find him and they couldn't shut him down and so, you know, a lot of people really liked it. And so I wondered if now that the web is such a unregulated, shall we say, place, well, I hope that it is the place that we can have real free speech, the stuff that we've wanted for a long time, you know. I know people from my generation, I'm 40, you know, there's a lot of us that we believe that's what the web was going to be. But they're actually starting to control it now in ways that we didn't think they would be able to. Uh, we just thought people would be more awake. And it's really the, the corporate and profit-driven model is is destroying what could be a beautiful thing. 
I think we've got to change the whole economic model of how the web works, and it has to be user-driven, or else the content is going to slide towards the corporate entities, and it's going to become more cl clouded and colluded, just like it has, with too much shit and too little space, and too expensive for what you get. That is the future of the web if we don't start demanding a different uh, way. So I think I got a lot of ideas, you know, about how we change that economic model. And actually, I was a uh, I was a consultant uh, with Accenture for a number of years. I'll just say. So I actually know some real shit about this, and I just wonder: is this thing yeah, better be working? Yeah, just checking. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to get that far into it and then find out. Oh, shit. So I actually know a little bit about what I'm talking about, and I want to talk a lot more about it, and I want to bring you know some of my messages out, but by God, i got to get some wind in my sail, man. I'm broke as a starved mule, and I ain't afraid to say it, because I'm not ashamed of it. I mean, it just... What can I tell you? I'm broke in America, just like so many. And I went to work every day, the last five years, every day. I didn't even have a sick day. I didn't take a single vacation. This is true. All of which can, I mean, just doesn't add up. And it's like half, it's like half the country doesn't know that it's happening. It's like the people that don't live near people that live at that level have no idea. It's like they, just keep acting like it isn't there. You turn on Fox News and it's like, hey, everything's great. <laughs> really? It is? Gosh, I'm hungry. You know? What the, f what the hell is going on in America? I mean, it's about time somebody started asking, isn't it? Aren't we, aren't we tired of being silent yet? Aren't we, aren't we a little bit tired of, of being told that it's unpatriotic to question anything? I know I sure as shit am. I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm ready to start talking, but you, you guys, I need, I need your help. I need people to click and send us around. And you know, the, it's simple. You know how it works. The revenue could, uh, could go a long way if, if, if anything I make from this, if you guys like it and then you click, uh, it's going right back into this. It's going right back into making these things, getting better cameras, better lights getting the copyrights passed through, getting everything going. So it doesn't cost you guys anything to click. That's what I'm saying. It does cost corporate America because they'll put their, they'll put their uh, ads on in the first 15 seconds or whatever, and then that will fund me. So how poetic would that be that a, that a warrior for the, for the average American who hates corporate America but who actually worked in their little tower for you know a number of years and learned the dark side and now wants to bring it back and use it against them I mean what better guy right I think I'm nominating myself as I fire up my tube cut and you know like what happened to real discourse in America? What happened to when people really had conversations? What happened to when people actually knew all the people in their neighborhood and, you know, didn't agree with them politically, but so what? Still liked them. Like, when did political differences suddenly turn us all into enemies and get us to quit talking? That is, is an acidic, caustic, terrible thing in America when people won't even speak to people that disagree with them. Discourse is dead. And I'm telling you, social progress won't happen without discourse. We've got to get talking, America. We've got to start speaking to one another again and viewing disagreement for just what it is. Ideological disagreement and nothing more. It doesn't have to be personal. That one, that shot right there, is um, that's where I was born. <laughs> in, in the cemetery, oddly enough. That's a story that I'll uh, fill in later, but geez. I, go, I still go down there. I still meditate down there.